Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a reading today for the Divine Feminine on her spiritual journey. So just take what resonates and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks that I'll be using, I'll let you guys know what they are as I shuffle each deck and they will all be listed down below as well as this Buck Organite created by Michelle from Wingham Bell. So let's go ahead and get started you guys. Let's take a look and see what does the energies of Archangel Raphael have for us today. So this could be any kind of healing. This could be our physical bodies, our spiritual bodies. Let's see what the message is. Ooh, we have a second opinion, okay? I kind of like this because to me, this just means that sometimes the answers come in a variety of different ways, you know? So don't just take one perspective or maybe one person's advice and just completely adopt that as this is the end all, this is everything that I need to know. You know, usually our own inner compass will let us know whether or not something feels good or something doesn't or something feels off. Trust that. It's kind of like with this reading. I always say, take what resonates and get rid of anything that doesn't. If something doesn't resonate for you, you do not have to take it. So a second opinion or an opinion, as in a variety of opinion, opinions, could be good for you. Like me, I listen to a variety of different podcasts, a variety of YouTubers, and read a variety of different perspectives in books, things like that. I'm not like really a one-track person. <laughs> I take a little bit of everything, and I kind of put it in some sort of like little pot and I just let it marinate and I take what feels right for me. Okay. And sometimes certain things don't feel right to begin with. And then only later on, it's like, ah, now I'm ready. Now I understand. Now I'm ready to see things in a new way. Because sometimes we might just, what's not resonating for us is actually triggering us. That could be it as well. But I feel like the message for you guys is to just always trust what you're feeling at that time because it's ultimately gonna guide you to your next steps anyways. So this is my Twin Flame Journey Shadows. And we're just going to see what shadow is coming up with this. Ooh, yeah, forceful. Don't try to force anything. I love this message. That just really confirms what I'm saying here. Don't force it to fit. If it doesn't fit, it's not for you. Don't force anything. You know, I've seen so many times just with the messages through, you know, the comments that people make on videos, this didn't resonate. Great. Didn't resonate for you. Perfect. It didn't resonate. It makes, you know, it's not for you. Or, you know, what does this mean? Cause I'm really confused. That's another thing. If something is really confusing or puzzling to you, don't try to force it. It's just not meant to settle into your soul at that time or at all. So don't be afraid to get a second opinion. Don't be afraid to take other people's perspectives into consideration. Don't be afraid that if not everything resonates with you, that it's not good, that it's just like you need to turn off from it altogether. Be open. Open your mind is also the message. Open your mind to more, more than what you're opening it up to. Be open to other perspectives. All right, let's see what else we need to know. This is my Arrows of Love Oracle. Okay, so we have Satin Sheet Seduction. And this is kind of an interesting message because what I'm getting here is don't be seduced by certain things. Certain things might seem very uh, like seductive as in you're very uh, drawn to something because that's what you want to hear. It feels good. And so, you know, sometimes we're just seduced by things that actually in a way turn out not to be that good, okay? Sometimes we just feel real attraction to things that aren't actually for our best good. And deep down inside, we know it, but we're still trying to kind of gravitate towards very seductive energy anyways, because it feels good. You know, no one really wants to feel negatively or badly or just kind of whatever. So this is telling us that sometimes seductive energies can be misleading, so... You know, try to take it all with a grain of salt. T try to take it all into perspective. Don't just glob on to what you want to hear. Open your mind to everything that you're hearing, okay? So this is my Arrows of Love Tarot. Let's see 
what all of this is about. Oh, okay. Um, this is the Knight of Wands, you guys. Seeker of Flames, Intensity. Again, we have to be careful with this energy because sometimes what we feel, we're very seduced by something. We feel so intense about a person or a, situ a situation. It must feel right because I feel all of this energy. The end of the day, you guys, energy is energy. And we have to kind of pay attention to where that energy leads us. If that energy leads you down a path where you're making decisions that aren't probably the best for you or even the best for other people, then that's probably not a path that you should be going down. If you have to force a situation or force someone else's hand because you feel super intense about something, but they're really resistant, again, that really can't lead to anywhere good. That's going to be a one-sided situation. So we are being asked to whatever opinion that we've gotten on something or maybe what someone has told us, we need to kind of open our mind to a different perspective instead of trying to force the pieces of the puzzle to fit that aren't fitting. I'm almost getting something is not fitting right now and we're trying to make it fit because we feel so intense about it. We feel so seduced by it. It must be right because it feels so good. I'm getting actually, it's like an indication that something is not good for you. Yeah, the door is locked for a reason. You're being shut out or blocked out for a reason. This door is not the correct door to continue to bang on. Some of you guys have been banging on a door for a while now and it hasn't opened for a reason. And it might just simply be that answer, which is it's just not good for you or it's not right for you or it's not the right time. But continuing to bang on doors and never opens them. Trying to force a door that doesn't want to open doesn't open that freaking door. It just creates more frustration for you. And it also keeps people, if especially if we have this attached to people, when we're trying to force things with other people, they usually run and the other direction. They usually run for the hills. You're, the, the intensity is too much for them. But I really feel that some of you guys are actually being protected by partners or people that it, it's just, it's, it's very fleeting. What you have with them never lasts. What you, this is someone who might be on the edge of your life because that can sometimes be the Knight of Wands. Somebody who's on the edge of your life. Somebody who's never really in it for the long haul. Somebody that may seduce you by their words. They might seduce you by the passion. But at the end of the day, that's all you have. There's nothing really to build upon here. And some of you guys feel so intensely seduced by this person that it's very difficult to pull away from them. But it might be time for you guys to start looking into other avenues of information to help you. And this is something that I notice in spiritual community right now with people that do readings. That's great. And if they help you, that's wonderful. But I feel that sometimes people can rely too heavily on cards or the messages that come through collective readings that may or not even be for them, okay? And then it might be time to start seeking some sort of either counsel or therapy for some, or just support in other communities besides just this tarot card reading community. I think that if we solely just base all of our you know, decisions, and we base all of our faith on readings, we're going to find ourselves lost. I've been doing this now for a while. I've been reading tarot now for going on like 20, 23, 24 years. And I've seen a lot of people put way too much emphasis and way too much belief in cards. Cards are tools, okay? And it's like anything else is a tool or opinions are opinions. It's just that when we take our own belief systems and we put all of our faith into things or people or objects, those things can start to become problematic. It's not the cards. It's not. These cards are not the problem. 
but it 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 is our obsession or it is the messages that are coming through that we're so heavily relying upon rather than relying on the reality of that what's really happening in our lives. If you guys are dealing with somebody who doesn't want to commit who's in a relationship with you and somebody else or somebody that's continuously blocking you or shutting you out or not returning your calls or not returning your text, or they don't really want anything to do with you, but yet you're still being seduced by these messages that this person is thinking about you and they really want you, but they're just scared. How is that helping you? It's not, it's keeping you stuck. So in this particular reading, what's coming through is that it's only going to be helpful to you to now maybe pull out of using this as a sole source of guidance in this situation and maybe get a different opinion from maybe a professional, somebody who deals with trauma or somebody who deals with wounds or, or techniques for healing that could actually really help you. These tarot card readings are really just light guidance only. And I'm not trying to be a person in the tarot card community saying that these are harmful, but sometimes people are in a lot of pain and have a lot of trauma. And because of that, they can really start to use and abuse these readings and really hurt themselves. And I'm just not really in the business of wanting to participate in that madness anymore. So that's one of the reasons that I've pulled away from doing readings such as what is your person thinking about you and even using cards that have messages on them. Obviously, if someone comes to me for a personal reading, that's a different story. But as far as the collective readings that I'm doing, I'm no longer putting out that kind of content because it's just my opinion with what I've seen in my own collective and just the collective in general that it might be doing more harm than good. So... That's just kind of where I stand right now as a person on this YouTube pl platform as well as Instagram. I just am doing what feels right for me at this time. And I've said this before in these last few weeks, you guys are either resonating with these changes or you're not. But I just feel like the cards are as plain as day here that shows us that by staying in a way like in bed with this idea of this person because we feel so intense about them because we feel like they're the one or we were told by some reader that this is our twin flame. It might be time for us to step outside of that box and to start looking at things for how they really are. In reality, if your reality is not matching up with what these readings are telling you or what these, really, what these readings are predicting, it might be that we need to check ourselves. And the only way that we can check ourselves is by getting a different opinion or pulling away from our dependency on these readings and these cards and these ideas. Okay, I'm not trying to talk anybody out of anything, but if you guys are struggling and if you guys are lost, then there's a message in this for you. It's time for something new. This is not the only person or the only energy that you are going to feel passionate about. The aces to me are always about us, us, number one, us, and our connection to spirit, our relationship with spirit letting that be our passion rather than another person because other people are always going to let you down. But your connection with God, spirit, the divine, the universe, however you guys resonate with that energy, that is the only thing that really truly matters. That's the only thing that's truly lasting. So this is really, I feel, helping to put things into perspective. Be your own flame. Don't look at another person for your happiness or survival in this life. Don't look at that person to be the person that keeps you going because eventually that energy will die out. The only energy that will continue that's infinite is the connection that you have in this life with the universe, with yourself. That is your mirror, okay? 
So I just feel like this reading is telling us that we need to start putting the focus back on us and people don't want to hear that. That idea is no fun. It sucks. I get it. You guys, you know, I have spent a majority of my life being in a fantasy world. I think I developed this as a child and it's not to say my childhood was just so traumatic, but there were certain things I feel from a psychological perspective to where I did not feel like I was getting my needs met. And so I developed this fantasy world. Well, this fantasy world I carried through until adult into adulthood. So anytime things started to go, you know, n bad or just didn't, meet my expectations, I gravitated towards a fantasy world because that fantasy world had, had always given me hope and comfort before. So even as an adult, I still coped in that same way. And sometimes the fantasy world can be great. You can be very artistic in that fantasy world. You can feel very inspired in that fantasy world, but to continue to live in it and base your entire reality on that fantasy world, that can be where a lot of things in our lives start to fall apart that are in our reality. We start to shut out the opportunities that we actually do have with the people in front of us, you know? And I have many stories that I will probably get deeper and deeper into my own experiences and my own journey through my marriage with Mr. Moon and just a lot of the things that we had to go through because it could perhaps be helpful to some of you guys suffering in the same way or going through certain things that you had to go through, you know, just kind of get out on the other side. But I can just be a testament to it, you guys, that, you know, and it's not to say, oh, I've worked so hard. It's not even that I've just had a lot of things that have happened to me that has have really helped me to kind of come out of that other side to come full circle with certain experience, just realizations. And it's not like it's all wonderful now and I've got it all figured out because I don't. It's when you think you got it all figured out that it's it's almost like God says, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't have it all figured out. This is just another this is just another trial on your journey, you know? So to me, this is just speaking volumes. We can either continue to stay in bed with these ideas and just revel in all that seduction and revel in all of that energy, or we can start to put all of that energy back into ourselves and our connection with the divine. Instead of looking to another person outside of ourselves to channel all that energy into. This is about the connection with ourselves and with the divine. That's what I'm getting from this reading. I love it. So let's now see what we need to surrender or surrender to. Let's see what spirit wants to say about that. What do we need to surrender or surrender to? Let's take a look. I love this. One of the biggest... One of the biggest things that will keep you down in life and keep you stuck and continuing to enter in over and over again into toxic relationships with people is low self-esteem. And I'm speaking from experience because I've suffered from low self-esteem and still do to this day. It's a big one. You know, where did it stem from? Well, I can blame everything on my childhood for only so long before I start to look at myself and say, what can I do about it now? You deserve success, love, and abundance. Set an intention to identify and release any remnants of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem and our low self-worth and where we value ourselves has a lot to do with what we are experiencing right now. So if you guys are not happy or you guys, let's just say, are in jobs that you hate or you're not being paid worth, you know, you're not being paid what you're worth or you're in a relationship where you're not getting your needs met or you're settling for behavior that's just really unsatisfactory, this has a lot to do with our low self-image and self-esteem. Team. We don't value ourselves enough. We've got to get to the bottom as to why we are not valuing ourselves. Where did it come from? That's why I am saying here, that's actually not me. It's the cards. It's coming through as it's time to look in another direction for help. It's time to go beyond. It's time to go into the, uh, go into the field of professionals for some of you guys. If somebody really needs mental help, 
you know, where they're really feeling all kinds of ways. A tarot card reading isn't going to do it. A Reiki session isn't going to do it. You know, a psychic reading isn't going to do it. Speaking to a healthcare professional, somebody who is freaking licensed to help you, that is where the direction needs to go. So I do tell, I say this a lot in the personal readings that I do. It might be time to shift gears and start using your money and seeking professional help. And it's not to, you know, down someone. I mean, that can be very triggering to say someone. Um, and I don't come from that place of saying like, you really need some help. It's just that it might be time to consider another option. I think we've run out of options here, you know? And I'm hoping that when those messages come through that people can actually, you know, take that and go, you know, maybe I do need to do something instead of going to another reader that might seduce them a little bit more with just telling them what they want to hear or not really being just 100% because it's uncomfortable to be 100% and to tell people what's really happening, you know? So we have to surrender that low self-esteem. We have to. We got to figure out why we have that low self-worth. And speaking to a professional, working with a professional can be helpful. Yeah, we have uncharted water scuba. So this means we've got to dive deep. There's something in our souls where we got to dive deep. So it's deeper than just, it's, it's not in the surface here. It's, you know, surface stuff, you know, you, you, can, you can do this and do that. But this is deep. Uncharted waters. Maybe things that you haven't even, don't even realize that are still affecting you, are affecting you. Okay? So this is about utilizing the help of a professional to go deep within maybe your past, whatever this is that helps you to surrender this low self-esteem, this low self-image, this why you don't value yourself enough type of energy. So I feel like that is an important message here. Yeah. To give you that confidence again. Okay. So we are doing a reading for the divine feminine. Well, guess what? We've got this masculine energy. This is about you balancing out. See, so, so many times we're taught, especially in twin flame types of situations, that we're seeking balance with our masculine, that person outside of ourselves. And I say nonsense to that. This is about balancing the masculine within you, being your own king and queen, having that energy that resides within you simultaneously, having that confidence having that strength, having that courage to also face your feminine side, which is to go into those waters, to go into your emotions, to go within the depths. Sometimes masculine energy is not cut out for that. It takes the feminine to be able to do that. But it also takes the masculine energy in within ourselves to actually go out and, you know, do certain things. So the masculine and the feminine energy within ourselves is so important. But this is also about balancing the energy that you have with your, you know, just w within this world, within yourself, within your, your connection to the divine. So it's divine, feminine, and masculine, but also your connection with the divine. It's all important. It's like a trinity. I don't know. I'm just getting that here. I don't mean to like be, uh, you know, I don't want to say anything that's going to offend anyone, but that it's, it's like a, a trinity here. I don't know why, but it's coming through that way. All right. So. Let's go ahead and just get another message. I just have a bunch of cards here and just I'm just going to go with it. Honor and trust your feelings. I like this. So Archangel Michael is coming through very strong, very courageous angel here and saying honor and trust your feelings. So there is something where you are supported and someone is guiding you and protecting you as they listen to you talk about your feelings. I'm not trying to say that everyone needs to go and talk to a therapist, but this is about maybe you even having your own conversations with God, having your own conversations with your creator, having your own conversations by writing something down in a journal and helping you to understand yourself by expressing your emotions and you're doing it in a safe space. So whatever that means to you guys, I'm getting here that it's really going to help you to find yourself. It's really going to help you to surrender certain beliefs about yourself because you're going to discover where they came from, where they originated from. 
So you might be doing this with the guidance of a professional or just the guidance of God. Either way, I feel like we are being asked to start this process of transformation and healing from within, from the ground up. Because a lot of the times we think that if we make the outside okay, then we'll feel better. It never happens that way. We're going from the deep inside and out. Everything is reflected from the inside and out, not the other way around. A lot of the times we feel that if we look better, we lose weight. We are more successful making more money, right? Or that we have, you know, recognition. It's all, if you don't feel good inside to begin with, you're going to come up empty. And I just know this from personal experience. And it's not that I'm so successful and that I'm so known. But all the money and all the recognition, you know, it, it didn't change anything for me. It didn't change anything. Even being with someone, having a partner in life, as wonderful as that is, Mr. Moon cannot heal me. Being with him doesn't heal me. It's wonderful to have that companionship and that support in a marriage, but it doesn't heal me. You know, I've got to find a way to heal myself. And that's still something that's, you know, in, in progress right now. So a lot of the times readers where they're at on their journey, they're here to reflect that out to their audience. And wherever you guys are vibrating, you may be in the same frequency with me. So if it's helpful to you, fantastic. If it's not, you, you may just, you know, gravitate towards um, another person or just, you know, whatever you need to do. To me, it's all about where you're at. And I just want the best for everybody out there. I really do. So now we're going to take a look. Actually, I don't even know what we're taking a look at. We're just, we're just shuffling cards. I'm just, I'm just going. I'm just going to keep going here. So this is uh, like saints and angels. So let's see what wants to come up. This right here is my spirits of darkness and light. Let's see what wants to come through. Ooh, we have spirit of the Pegasus. Unrealistic delusions, not as it seems. You know, again, we were talking about being caught up and seduced in certain ideas, okay? Being in a fantasy world, being in a delusion. I was sharing with you guys that I've spent a lot of my time being in a fantasy world. A fantasy is a nice thought, but a fantasy is not based in reality. A fantasy doesn't sustain you in reality. It doesn't help you to deal with everyday things such as Getting up, going to work, figuring out what you're going to do, taking care. You know what I mean? It's, you can only live on fumes for so long. Eventually, the reality sets in and it's just like, wow, everything that I was building my life upon, everything that I thought is not as it seemed. And especially when we put our expectations onto other people, it usually is not, you know, it's not going to measure up or add up to what we thought. And it doesn't mean that has to be even a negative or a bad thing, but that's just one of the reasons why we should really, really try to refrain from putting all of our eggs into other people's baskets. Oh my gosh, we have Christ. Love it. And we also have heaven is watching over you. Guardian angel. So I don't really need to say any more there. I did say something about the Trinity. And um, I feel like maybe a lot of you guys are uh, perhaps accepting um, more of like a connection with Christ or God. Um, you know, I know that there are some people in this community that are going from new age to God. Everybody has their own style with doing things. Everybody, um, everybody I feel has good intentions. And sometimes people get a plethora of energy at once and they don't know what to do with it. I remember when my mom, um, you know, she had her kind of spiritual awakening back in 2010 and I was raised by someone, my, you know, my mom who was against organized religion. I mean, she had a real aversion to it and she was just very headstrong, stubborn, outspoken, kind of like me. So, you know, like mother, like daughter. And so when she made this shift to Christ and there were, there were obviously things that had happened too, um, before that, that created, I felt a lot of, you know, wounds and things in our relationship. So 
I had just a lot of issues already. And so when she turned her life over to Christ and had her um, spiritual awakening, I was really turned off by it. I, I didn't want to hear about it. I didn't want anything to do with it. I, I looked at it as a cop-out. I looked at it as all the things that she had done wrong and all the things that she had done to hurt us. I just looked at it as, you know, it was just a way out of the whole situation. It was just a freaking cop-out, you know? Um, so, you know, we're 11 years later. And I think that just as you grow and as you evolve, you start to see things differently. And I'm starting to see things differently. I'm starting to see how important it is to have that relationship with your, you know, with yourself, but also with, with, you know, with yourself is your connection to, you know, God, the creator, the universe, all of that. That's really what a spiritual journey is. It's not about another person. And I think that when I came on to this, you know, journey with, you know, in 2017, I very much made it about another person. And even though we can learn things about ourselves through these relationships with other people, I think that I just placed a lot of importance on another person. Like, yes, your person, this is your, this is your reason for existing. This is your reason for your life's purpose. This is your reason for your mission, da, 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 da. And even though that felt good at the time it didn't in it just didn't really turn out to be what i thought and that doesn't mean that that entire concept of connection and all the labels and stuff that it's bad wrong not you know doesn't exist you know isn't real even though that's what this card really is saying but that's not what i'm necessarily saying but I feel that sometimes when we put all of our emphasis and all of our faith onto another person, we are going to end up empty every time. So I feel like some, uh, there are some people in this community that have kind of come full circle with things and have realized that, you know what, this journey wasn't what I thought. I put my faith into the wrong thing. This really is the answer for me. I feel like there are some things that are happening right now in people's lives. And again, we may not agree with how people are handling it, you know, I know Doreen Virtue made a huge transition. I don't even know how long ago that was now. And I'm actually, these are her cards. You know, a lot of people burned her cards. She actually asked people to stop using them. And I thought to myself, these are tools. The energy that you were tapped into at the time, I don't think is demonic at all. Christ is not demonic to me. So the fact that Christ is coming through and heaven is watching over me, how can that be de demonic in these cards? What's, what could perhaps be evil or demonic is the expectation or the person that's attached to these messages. So again, to, to me, it's all about the heart of the person, not necessarily the tools. And people might disagree with that. And that's fine. Totally, totally fine. But what I'm getting here is that a lot of people are getting clarity on their spiritual journeys. And that might not be in this form here for everyone. But I just feel like we're starting to put our faith back into our higher power, whatever that means to you, instead of another person. And I feel that that's really where our ascension is, is our connection with the divine, our connection with ourselves, not necessarily our connection with another person, because a lot of people are getting stuck in soul connections. A lot of people are getting hung up on other people. A lot of people are putting way too much faith, almost worship on another person. And I'm seeing that it's creating a lot of damage for a lot of people. And I feel like that's one of the reasons that Christ is coming through here. And people might say, because you're using tarot cards, Mystic Moon, that ain't the real Christ. That's, that's demonic. You know, to each your own, whatever you want to say. It's, again, <laughs> that's your belief system. But uh, that is the energy I'm feeling here for you guys. You know, it's not to say, oh gosh, you know, repent, to, you know, turn to Christ, you know, to each their own, everyone on their own journey. But if something is just, you're feeling like lost on this journey, you're feeling lost because you put all of your emphasis and all of your time and dedication into another person, that's where you went wrong. That's where you misinterpreted perhaps this spiritual awakening. Maybe all along it wasn't really about another person. It could be that this person helped to get you to where you're at today, but they're not the answer to all of it for you. And we got to just stop making our journeys about specific people.
Let's make it about ourselves and let's make it about our connection with the divine. That's what I'm getting here for this reading. Take it or leave it. All right. So let's go ahead and go into this deck here. This is my Science for Spirit Love Oracle. Red. Love it. We have passion, anger, and courage. The color red. And what's interesting is because there was a message about red seduction and passion as well as the intensity that we feel sometimes we feel intense passion sometimes we feel intense anger sometimes we feel intense courage it all comes from the same place but sometimes that energy when it's not balanced can mis be misleading i feel like there's a message in that for us sometimes it can be misleading so let's see what we get As a right, deep emotional healing. Okay, well, there was something about emotional healing, honoring our feelings, okay? Helping me understand and express my emotions with love. So your heart is ready to heal from past experiences and you are willing to devote time and energy towards therapeutic care. So there is something about caring for ourselves. You know, Sometimes when we don't feel passionate or angry about something, we don't know that something is there. We don't know that something needs to be healed. So the only, the only way that you're ever going to know is if you're feeling that energy in whatever shape or form it takes. So not everything that comes up in our lives or everything that we experience is bad. It's all for a reason. And that's what I feel is being said here. We have... Releasing resistance. Wow. Let's read it. Uh, today, I will simply accept. I will relinquish the need to be in resistance to myself and my environment in any way. I will move forward in joy by accepting where I am right now. That's beautiful. That is really, really beautiful. And so let me go ahead and go into some of the past cards that we've gone through where we're trying to force something to happen. That force, that passion that we feel can sometimes, you know, deceive us and make us feel like we have to have something or something has to happen. And sometimes it's forcing us to experience something so we can heal it and release it. Do you see how this is all coming together? Because we're meant to experience joy and, and, and love. But so many times we create more issues and we create things with our own expectations and our own, you know, interpretations of things. That's really where the suffering is. But really, we're meant to feel this joy. And sometimes the only way that we can really get to this joy is by forcing ourselves to let go of things and to heal things that we feel and we're desperately holding on to that we feel is right for us. Sometimes the universe and God has other plans. Sometimes what you thought you were so passionate about, it means something else. But I'm getting here at the end of the day, it is all for us. Your entire experience, everything that you've gone through is for you. It's not about other people. It's for you. Everything is for you. So it's being, we're being asked that today we're going to really, really try to simply accept that we're going to release and we're going to relinquish our need to try to control anything except for our own experience. We can't force or try to will other people to do what we want them to do. We can only take care of ourselves. That's it. So it's all about us healing from our past experiences. Anything that's bubbling up for you. Anything that you feel passionately tied to or just feel maybe even angry, anger towards, this is all a mechanism that's popping up that's saying, you know what, this is something that you need to look at and this is something that you need to heal. And remember, it's all coming together. I said, we're going deep. This is deep, baby. This is not surface. This is deep. 
deep emotional stuff, stuff that may have been really, really, we've been putting a lot of layers and we've been hiding a lot of this stuff for a long time. So now it's time for us to go deep. And this deep journey, it's uncharted. We haven't been there before. We haven't done this work before. You think you have, but you haven't. So sometimes it takes something outside of ourselves to help us through this journey. And at, that could be for some of you guys where you're at. You're ready to open yourself up more to God. You're, you're ready to open yourself up more to your faith, whatever that happens to be, okay? But heaven is watching over you. This just means the universe is watching over you. The universe wants you to be in the state of joy. But if you are suffering through your passions, through what you're obsessed with or holding on to for dear life or angry about or scared, these are all indications that are pushing you deeper into yourself and saying, you need to look at this. You need to heal this or else you will be in a joyless life and it's time to change. So... Maybe it won't be fun, but it's necessary. So let's take a look at, hmm, what do I want to do now? We're going to go into my Tall Tales Cat Crew. Get started. See, there's no better time than to get started. I have some things where I'm like, I've been doing some research for a while, and it's like, why am I still doing this research? Why am I just not doing it? It's time. It's time. All right, this is my divine feminine healing. We have vampire. <laughs> I like this. Okay, I will try my best to handle my own issues rather than draining the energies of others around me. So we never like to look at ourselves as being, um, you know, draining or a drain on other people. There's certain issues that I have, and I have a lot of excuses as to why I'm not going to change those things. But guess what? When they pop up or when I'm suffering, other people around me are suffering. So we all know that there's certain things about us that we probably can do differently that won't be a drain on other people. But we have to just make that decision to get started and to just say, you know what? I just, I refuse to do this anymore. I refuse to continue to participate in this madness. I'm not going to drain other people. I'm not going to look at other people to help me or to, um, you know, uh, feed me, sustain me. And I'm not talking about like genuine help. Like if you need help, you know, ask for it. I'm talking about, I need you because I don't want to do the work. Or I want to drain you because um, I get some sort of supply off of it and it helps me to not focus on my own stuff. Or I need to complain and I just want someone to hear when really you're not thinking about how it might be affecting the people around you that maybe they're dodging your phone calls. Have you ever had, have you ever had that sense that somebody is, is dodging you or somebody is purposely just, you know, uh, maybe not responding? There's something perhaps that's coming from you that makes your person just not want to connect with you because there's something that is heavy. There's something toxic. There's something that's just not something they want to invite in their lives. So if you no longer want to be that person to people, it's time for you to get started with your healing. It's time for you to get started and, and maybe talking about something different. Because I don't think a lot of the times that we realize that there's certain things that other people are just kind of like, enough already. I'm tired of hearing the same complaint. I'm tired of hearing that you're in the same spot that you were five years ago. Uh, you know, nothing's changed. It's really, really difficult for people to just be a cheerleader constantly for someone that's not helping themselves. You know, that can be enabling for people, like negatively enabling. So we have to just check ourselves and, 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 and to kind of figure out where we're at and how we might be affecting others, how our unhealthiness, our own toxicity, our patterns, our unhealed wounds might be affecting people. All right. And this could be somebody that's a drain on your life as well. It's time for you to get started to figure out how you can basically deal with the situation in a tactful, loving way, but what's holding healthy boundaries for yourself. And sometimes that's not, that's not easy to do. Sometimes silence is golden. Sometimes silence is the best thing that you can give to someone where, you know what? I just can't do it again. You know? So let's now go ahead and just get some more messages. What do we need to know?
Pelican. Oh gosh, I love pelicans. Whenever I see them at the beach, when I used to live in Southern California, oh, that was just my favorite bird to see. Choose to follow the path of forgiveness and raise your vibration. Absolutely. This is the thing, you guys. When it comes to forgiveness, forgiveness is about your own heart, okay? Um, we're not obligated or owe anybody the actual like words of I forgive you because so many times people actually say that and they don't even mean it. So to me, sometimes saying nothing and just holding that vibration of forgiveness within you, that is all that really matters. It's not about, you know, doing it for someone else. It's about being in that vibration and just holding that vibration of true forgiveness that bright vibration will be felt, especially if it's genuine. But calling someone up to say that you're sorry, I'm not saying that that's not the meaning every single time, like people can't really mean that. But that doesn't nece that's not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily necessary. We don't necessarily have to do those things in order to feel the vibration of forgiveness. We can forgive people that we haven't spoken to in, you know, decades. And just that vibration of forgiving that person will change your life. So there's something about choosing to follow the path of forgiveness and letting go of all of that hate, all of that blame, you know, holding other people responsible for our pain. This is one of the reasons that it was really hard for me specifically to really even just open my hard up in my mind to my mom for such a long period of time because I was still so focused on all of that bitterness that I just could not hear it. I could not even open myself up to it. But some of the shifts in the, some of the shifts that I'm making now, it's interesting how now I'm more open to hear it. I'm more open to seeing things from her perspective, whereas I wasn't before. And that took 11 years. Actually, it took longer, but it started really you know, with her awakening. All right, what else? Eight of thought, eight of swords. Oof. You may feel as though you're restricted by the circumstances you find yourself in, but that's just an illusion. Make a promise to yourself to refuse to be stuck in a situation that's making you unhappy. Don't wait for someone to come to the rescue when you can free yourself. Ah. So do you see this, you guys? This is also about people that have hurt you. Some of you guys might be waiting for that apology. Some of you guys might be waiting for this person to change their ways. And then you think to yourself, only then will you be released. That is an illusion. It's not true. You don't need someone else to say they're sorry to you. You don't even need somebody else to feel it. Wouldn't it be nice? Yes, the Beach Boys, wouldn't it be nice? But. That's not always reality. People are sometimes not on the same vibration when it comes to these things. That's why you got to do the work on yourself. That's why you've got to just focus on you and not focus on what this other person is doing or still not doing or needs to do. Then you'll be happy. No, choose to be happy now. Choose to release yourself from this thought that they have to do something. Because sometimes justice, it seems like it's not being served and it might not be served in the way that you think it should be served, but ultimately it is resolved, but you have to do your part to get into that vibration of true forgiveness. And the only way that you can get to that vibration is by doing the work on yourself that's necessary for you to get to that place. Just saying you forgive someone doesn't make it so. You've got to for, you've got to really feel it. You've got to really mean it. So if some of you guys are stuck and hung up on blaming someone else still or holding somebody still accountable for your, your wounds and um, just your pain, we're being asked to get that second opinion on how we can start to release ourselves from this tortured, bondaged state. Okay. Um, let's see. I just want to, there's a couple more decks that I want to use and then we're going to end it at an hour. It's called the power of love cards. We have kindness. I love that. 
It says you are a humanitarian made of love and you are able to share that energy with others. So lead by example. This is the thing. Saying things are great, you know, just shouting out to the world that you're this changed person or that you're this or you're that doesn't make it so. It's about energy. It's about your energy. It's about inspiring other people. So, and I've done this myself where I'm just regurgitating crap. I'm just saying what, you know, I think I need to say, or I'm, I'm just saying what I'm reading, but not really feeling it. There's a difference between actually feeling something and just repeating something. People know the difference. And so this is saying, if you guys have something that you're going through, if you guys have something that you're experiencing and you feel that energy and you feel obliged to share that with other people, share it. Because guess what? Love makes the world go around. Kindness. It's about being kind. It's just being in that energy. You don't necessarily have to say kind words to people, even though that's a wonderful thing. But just being in the energy of love, forgiveness, kindness, that's an energy that's infectious to other people. That can actually help a lot of other people and inspire them to get out of their heads and get out of that torturous spot in their minds where they're just rolling around in the same dirt over and over again and they're never getting clean. So this is about being that beacon of light on this planet for other people to help them to raise their vibration. So some of you guys might be in a position where you want to start you know, doing something where people can, um, you know, experience your vibration or that you can help to shift the vibration of the world, or you can spread your kindness and your love with other people. If you guys feel like that's a part of your purpose and your mission is to help other people, it says you are a humanitarian. You're made of love. I mean, everybody is really, we all have something to share. We all have gifts. You know, these gifts might be utilized in different ways and it doesn't have to look the same for everybody across the board. But if you're watching this reading, you may feel guided to start to do something where you can shine your light and kindness on the world. So we are being asked instead of staying stuck or hung up on some person, you know, if that's the story, that might not might be the story for everybody. But if you're hung up on a person, instead of staying stuck and trapped in your home or just like being depressed about someone, this is telling you there's so many things that you can do to help to not only raise your own vibration, but you'll also help to raise other people's vibration. So stop wasting time on this. Stop wasting time being hung up or waiting for other people to come back or waiting for other people to change. Forget it. Start to choose yourself now and start to make a difference in the world. We're not making a difference being stuck. We're not making a difference being obsessed about someone. We're not making a difference trying to figure out how we're going to get someone back or when they're going to call us back or be a part of our world again. That's not making a difference at all. That's not making a positive impact at all. What can you do in the meantime to help yourself so you can help other people? That's the point. Okay. That's the point. Love this. All right, so there's a couple of decks I haven't used. I'm going to go ahead and use those at the very end to get our final messages. Okay, so that's Mother Mary cards, and these are just spirit messages. And then I've got these tarot cards that I didn't use, so I will go ahead and use those, and that'll wrap up our messages. Okay. Trust. I know that God in his infinite wisdom and love is answering my prayers right now. You know, wherever you guys are at on your journey, trust that you are there for a reason. Trust that you have been guided to this exact moment for a reason. And even if it's not exactly where you want to be, or it doesn't look exactly, you know, where you wanted it to be, or other people don't agree with where you're at, it doesn't matter. All that matters is your connection with your higher power, your connection with God, your connection with the divine, your connection and where you're at on this planet and what, why you came here and why you're living the, where you're living right now in this time and what you came here to do. That's really all that matters. That's it. 
your prayers are being answered through everything that you're going through right now. And even if it's uncomfortable, even if it scares the crap out of you, your prayers are actually being answered. I love that. Trust that everything is happening exactly the way that it's supposed to. A child's love. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, it makes me want to cry. And I'm not trying to turn this reading into something that is like religious or, you know, all about like Christ. But I do have to look at this, you know, child of like a child of God. We're children of the universe, a child's love. There is something about unconditional love. There's something about unconditional love of, you know, whatever you've done in this life, whatever has, you know, happened, whatever has led you astray, whatever you've put your faith or your time into, it's never too late. It's never too late to reconnect with who you truly are. And that is a child of this universe, a child of God. And it says a child's love. The love between a parent and a child is one of the most precious and deep connections that we make during our time on earth. Again, this is not necessarily about your earthly connections. This is about your connection with your creator. And that's really what came up at the very beginning of the reading. We have placed too much emphasis and too much energy on these other human connections. And even though they are part of our journey, yes, and we are learning through trial and error through those soul connections, that's not the entire reason for our existence. And I feel that a lot of people have just either been led astray or led further into their darkness and further into their pain and their wounds. And now they're having to kind of like reverse and do a lot of that work from the ground up, which again, we have to trust is necessary. We ended up at this destination for a reason, but it's never too late to kind of pull ourselves out of the depths, the abyss, that dark abyss. And some of us, are turning to this idea that there is a power greater than ourselves that is a part of that. And it's to your relationship with that that may lead you out of that darkness that is for some of you out there, okay? But this is talking about, this is playing a huge part, a huge role in our lives right now. And some of you guys might have your own relationship with your own human children. And this could be that there is something perhaps that is happening. You know, I know I spoke a lot about my relationship with my mother. And I also have a daughter, you know? And so it's just kind of like a generation, you know, a different generation. The generation of my relationship with my mom and the generation of my relationship with my daughter and how it all kind of just, you know, connects and how whatever we're going through and whatever we experience and learn and whatever wisdom we gather along the journey, it's like we're helping each other by sharing that wisdom. And it's not to say my way is the right way. I'm definitely, I have a real aversion to that kind of teaching. I have a real aversion to that kind of, um, you know, way of, of going about it. And it's not to villainize anyone or say that anybody else is bad because they're doing it that way. But I just feel that this for me is a gradual shift and I'm opening my eyes and I'm opening up my heart to different things on this journey. You know, I've always been just a very new agey spiritual person and that's, and it's actually led me to opening my eyes to other types of just things. And I think it's, I think it's a wonderful thing. And uh, it doesn't make everything now wrong that I ever experienced. Um, it all happened for a reason. And maybe some of you guys are just maybe opening your eyes up to just different ideas or just different things. You know, I was raised a Christian. My mom was technically raised Christian. And it doesn't mean that, you know, that's like the, the one and only way. I'm not that type of person that's going to say something like that. But whatever is in your heart is what, is what, what I feel like this reading is kind of telling you to trust because that is the way home for you. And it's like a child 
being called back to the parent, you know? And it's also about, I don't want to use the word repair because that's not really the right phrase or the right concept. It's not about repairing anything, but it's just about experiencing that, that love, you know, and that love is pure and it's unconditional. So again, if we're looking for people or human relationships to fulfill us or sustain us, we are going to we are going to come up short. And so we've got to find a way to make that connection in a different way. So it's just this path that's opening up. I feel for, for some of you guys where you're feeling like there's something greater than these relationships. There's something greater than what you're experiencing here on earth. And it does take trust and faith just to kind of see things in a whole new way, you know? So I don't know. Let's go ahead and get some final, um, final messages here for these cards. Ace Pentacles. It's never too late to start and to plant a new seed. To me, this is the beginning of a new journey in a whole new way. Okay. And again, I don't agree with villainize villainizing your past. You know, cutting it out. There's been other times on my journey where I've done that, where I'm just like, God, why did I do that? You know, why did I throw all that stuff away? It would have been nice to kind of look back on those things. Uh, so it's, it's not necessarily about everything that led up to this point is, is bad or evil. I just feel that everything that's led up to this point has been for your highest good. And it's just about making some changes on your journey that just feel better for you. How, however people feel peaceful, I feel, I don't see how that can be wrong, you know, but I'm still learning. I don't really know everything. I don't have all the answers. We have six of pentacles. Beautiful. This is give, give and take. So this is like an equal exchange of give and take. This is nice, balanced energy. What you put out, you get back. So it does require work. And I've always said this. It's co-creation, co-creating. You're co-creating with the divine. It's not just, you're, you're not showing up. You've got to do the work. You know, you've got to do the work. And so if you guys are really, really wanting to start that journey to back to yourself and to pull yourself away from certain paths or maybe even belief systems that have caused you to kind of lose sight or have even led you into the, like the darkness, you know, dark pits of your soul. It's time to show up for yourself, plant some new seeds, but also be prepared to, to work because when we work, then there is, there is that, you know, you provide a service and you get paid for that service and there's that reciprocity. That's just the way it works. That's the way life works. That's the way any relationship, it's give and take. It's not just take, 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 sit down and do nothing and just pray for everything to change. Sometimes miracles do occur in that way, but in our everyday lives, that's not really the way it works. We got to show up. We have to show up for ourselves and we also have to show up for other people too. And other people also, it's nice when they show up and then there's this back and forth energy that's nice and balanced and everybody feels great. So Six of Pentacles to me is also about community. If some of you guys want to start somewhere new on your journey, it might be time to either find a new community or to start being around like-minded individuals. That's really important. It's not about, again, just, you know, demonizing everyone from your past and saying, oh, you're not of my same vibration anymore. I'm out. You know, we're doing things with kindness, of course, but if you guys feel guided or drawn to something new, and I can see like this beautiful castle here, it's like this beautiful palace, enter into that, enter into that new palace or that kingdom and come together with like-minded individuals, you know, to experience more on your journey. Mm-hmm. There's that Ace of Wands again. Remember that, that card here? Let me find it. Here it is. That's where you're going to find you. Ace of Wands. That's where you're going to find all of that passion. That's about you. It's not going to be about another person. It may not even be about material earthly things. It may just be this bliss that you haven't even experienced yet. So uncharted territories, there's something about us 
going deeper on our journeys somewhere that we've never gone before. You know, open your minds to something new because there could be something else that's better than what you've experienced. Or it could be exactly where you've been headed all along, but you just had a lot of detours along the way. So anyways, you guys, I hope that that reading was helpful to somebody out there. I hope there was messages for some of you guys. Maybe there weren't for others. Maybe some people were turned off by some of the, you know, um, energies that came through. Again, I can't really control that. I just am putting out content that may speak to someone out there and may, um, you know, cause some sort of positive impact or maybe even inspire you guys to do some sort of healing or open your minds in new directions that will lead to your ultimate joy, happiness, and peace and healing. So that's my intention. So thanks for watching you guys. You have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.